How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to break down um, enter AS option C and take a look at what we need to do in order to get it operational. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and get out of the way, grab my pen tool and let's get to the drawing. So option C is gonna be somewhat similar to option B where with um, option C, we are trying to do a single label switch path from ingress PE to egress PE. Meaning that, regardless, so in option B, you have an LSP to here, you have another one from here to here, and then you have one from here to here. Okay, all that's great. With option C, you're trying to do one single label switch path the entire way. Now, a lot of the same rules apply for this. So you need your BGB peerings to your route reflectors in order to propagate the routes. Um, all that type of stuff comes into play still. Now, instead of doing a VPN V4 eBGP peering here, for example, or VPN V6, depending on the situation, you're now moving away from that and you're doing, uh, and sorry, and doing a an LDP label here where you're going to be having a, a label value pop in. So the MPLS BGP forwarding capability comes into play here and then you have your static routes here. Well, instead of doing that, let me back this up a little bit. Instead of doing the configuration like that, we're going to convert this to a IPB4 eBGB peering, you know, just a normal one that you would do if you were not doing any MPLS at all between the service providers. But then you also add in the labeling function. So you do what they call the send label command on both sides, where in iOS you use the send label command, in XR you use labeled unicast and we're going to go through all the prop uh, all the possibilities and the different capabilities that come into play with that now once you do all of this that's just your control plane that gets your BGP end-to-end -end. there's some additional things that need to happen because remember your BGP is terminating right here so from there you need to do one of two things um, you need to for the option B thing, so your ASBR stuff comes into play, right? So you either have to do the the option B variations of that, of either the have the VRFs locally configured on the on the ASBR. You need to make the ASBR a route reflector, or you have to do the route target filter disabling. Those are your options for the ASBR. Now, assuming you've done all that, which means that you're now you're exchanging BGP routes and you're also bringing stuff into the ASBR. So up until this point, I've turned off VPN v4 between CSR5 and CSR6 and XRV11 and XRV12. So no, we no longer have BGP learned routes here, 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 or here for VPN v4 or VPN v6. So that's, going, that's where this comes into play. In order for the ASBRs to learn the internal BGP routes, you need to use the option B variations for the ASBRs. Now for the provider edge routers, the route target import process still comes into play where you need to import the remote remote PE, PE router um, route target values. So in other words, whatever CSR 8 has configured and XR 16 has configured needs to be added to here that we've already done all that so we don't need to worry about those aspects of it that gets you basically what option b was doing with option c there's a couple more steps and this is why i say it's the more complicated variation of inter as op inter as mpls vpn because now i need to go and either do one of two things number one i have the ability of 
taking the routes that have been propagated between the autonomous systems. So we have um, eBGP routes that have been exchanged between the ASBRs. I need to do either one, I need to redistribute BGP into IGP and redistribute IGP into BGP. There's another variation of that where you just simply take um, BGP area under, um, so what, what this means is when you receive these BGP routes inbound on the ASBR, those routes somehow need to get learned by the route reflector and the PE routers of the autonomous system you're trying to advertise those routes to. So that means when CSR6 advertises routes to CSR5, CSR5 has to do something in terms of getting those routes into AS1. The most common thing to do is redistribute BGP into IGP. You can also redistribute IGP into BGP, but be selective for just the PE uh, slash 32 loopbacks is an option. The most common thing people will do is on every router, they will basically advertise the loopback zero interface into BGP, specifically IPv4 unicast. They're going to do that and then that will allow the PE routers to advertise themselves. That will be propagated to the ASBRs and then propagate that on. The goal is to exchange the route reflector and PE and PE loopbacks between ASs. When you do that, that's what's going to allow the end-to-end -end label switch path. That's one variation. Another variation of this is on the ASBR. The second one here is to you to is to no to not redistribute BGP into IGP. So well, actually, before I dive into the second variation, what is the purpose of this specifically? What is the purpose of redistributing BGP into IGP? And that is to allocate a label for all of the remote autonomous systems loopbacks so that when traffic is going from the ingress PE here on CSR1 to the egress PE, a, egress ASBR CSR5, that there is a LDP label that's generated across the wire so we can use LDP to get to the egress ASBR. That is the purpose of doing BGP to IGP redistribution. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different examples of how that would come into play. But that's basically what's, what's happening. Now the second one here is going to be on the ASBRs, we would use um, IPv4 BGP plus labels. So basically, this is referred to as labeled unicast. And the, the purpose of using that is then you form from here, you go uh, to the ASBR and you can have a labeled unicast peering to these guys right here, which is going to be from the ASBR down to the PE router. Some people also do it to the route reflector. They'll just do an IPv4 unicast peering here. These guys will be route reflectors. And then you'll just turn on the IPv4 unicast address family with the, uh, the existing uh, VPNv4 and VPNv6 B IBGP peerings you've already formed with the route reflector. So you just ent uh, uh, turn on an, an additional address family. And then that will be using uh, BGP labeled unicast. And you can do the same thing over on this side here as well. So there's a couple different ways of accomplishing the goal. That There's a lot going on with option C. Now once you've done all this, you'll also need, let me switch colors here, you'll need to form a VPNv4 and VPNv6. So VPNv4 slash VPNv6 peering. So this will be an eBGP 
multi-hop peering between the route reflectors. And this is what's going to allow them to exchange routes with each other between the autonomous systems. And what will end up happening is this will be the VPN labels. So all the stuff that we've talked about up to this point has been strictly IPv4 unicast or, or IPv6 unicast. When you switch over to do the route reflector to route reflector peerings, you're doing the VPNv4 to VPNv4. So basically, you've, you're doing VPNv4, VPNv6 connectivity from the provider edge routers to the, to the route reflector, and then from the route reflector up to the ASBR. That stuff's already been already happening. When you do the route reflector to route reflector config, you're also doing, you're allowing AS1 to learn AS2 information, and the same thing with AS1, you're allowing AS1 information over here. That's going to allow the end-to-end -end label switch path to be generated. That's why you need to exchange the loopback information on the provider edge routers with each of the autonomous systems so that you can build a LSP to LSP because you're going to basically need to form a end-to-end -end label switch path loop uh, ingress PE to egress PE between the autonomous systems. Now there's one other major issue that comes into play with this. Because of the fact that this route reflector would learn all the routes from this route reflector, you're not doing route reflector peering between the autonomous systems because you can't do that. So route reflection is only a IBGP configuration option, not an EBGP. So you're forming an EBGP multi-hop connection between the route reflectors and then what's going to end up happening is whatever the remote AS route reflector IP is that you peered with, that will be the update that is received and forwarded on to the PE routers. So in other words, whenever CSR1 learns a route from CSR8, the next hop that's going to be seen is going to be route reflector 2. What's going to end up happening is you'll actually build a, uh, you'll build two LSPs. You'll build one from CSR1 to the route reflector and then one from the route reflector down to the egress PE. You need to use the command known as next hop unchanged on both route reflectors on these peerings to say, you know what, don't set your next hop to the route reflector. Set your next hop to the AS, uh, to the PE router that advertised the route reflector, the update. So in this case, CSR8 generates a route. route this route reflector here learns about it. This route reflector is going to propagate it to here. Or I'm sorry, to, to here. This guy's going to learn it and propagate it down to here. But this guy right here sees it come from right here. So this guy is going to know, without using next hop unchanged, to point towards this guy as its next hop. So by typing in next hop unchanged, we actually don't need to do that. We actually set the next hop to be the guy that who originally propagated it. So what ends up happening then, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen now, you end up getting a label switch path that goes like this end to end. So you get one really long AS path, or one really long LSP, label switch path, end to end. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And that's why it's one of those things where when you start diving into the details of how it works, it can be a little daunting to like, oh, wow, that's, there's a lot. And there is. So that's why when I talk about how option C works, it's the more complicated variation. Now, there is one that's um, a little bit more complicated than this known as carrier supporting carrier. Now, we will be transiting, uh, taking a look at carrier supporting carrier in an upcoming set of videos. I'm pretty much going to take the topology we have here, modify it a little bit so we can take a look at CSC, but it's going to be, that won't happen right away. We're going to, I'm going to do option D first and stuff like that, but option D, C is rather complicated. So what will end up happening is once the LSPs are built and stuff like that, then we'll start playing around with the different ways that you can build the, the connectivity and stuff like that. And there's multiple layers of configuration that are coming into play with this, multiple address families and stuff like that. It gets very complicated. So I find it it's 
really necessary to break down the individual components to understand all the different ways that it works and how it comes into play because if you don't do it and play around with it quite a bit, you're going to run into a lot of problems in terms of how to get it working and things like that. So that's going to be what we end up doing. We'll go through the step-by-step -step configuration, get everything up and running. So just well, let me go ahead and just recap what it is that needs to be done. The first thing that needs to happen is a IPv4 plus label eBGP peering on the ASBR. The second thing that needs to happen is either a route target filter disabling the route reflector config or the uh, VRF configuration on the ASBR. Three, the route target import on PEs. Four is going to be the advertisement of route reflector and PE um, loopback addresses into BGP. Four will be four and I'll put or five. Four will be the BGP to IGP redistribution so we can advertise or allocate um, LDP labels to the B, uh, to those routes that have been redistributed into IGP or we do um, labeled unicast from the ASBRs down to either the route reflector or to the PE routers directly and then uh, six, we have the route reflector to route reflector eBGP multi-hop peering via VPN V4 and V6. And then seven is going to be the, uh, the next hop unchanged on the route reflectors for VPN v4 slash v6 those are the the high level pieces there's a lot going on again the most complicated version of inter as options that there are now carrier supporting carrier is going to be very similar to that with the exception of the core the core carrier which is going to be the hierarchy above where we're looking at now is treating these providers as second, like tier two providers and stuff like that. So uh, you'll still do the route propagation and the next hop on change and all that type of stuff. All that type of stuff will come into play. We'll talk about carrier supporting carrier. So just doing two or more carriers, this can become a, uh, a big issue when you start diving into the details of it. So this also assumes that there's a lot of um, trust between the autonomous systems because now you're having to go do a bunch of additional configuration and allowing uh, you know one provider to exchange routes with another one and you know assuming you don't have any routing loops or anything like that coming into play so a lot of stuff that goes into play with this type of stuff so with that being said ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video and until next time take it easy